Hey everyone, welcome back to Portal of Wisdom. I'm back today with another story for you. If you are new to the channel, like and subscribe and click that little post notification bell so you get alerted when I post new videos. And now on to today's topic. So today we are going to talk about a gold cache near a Colorado hot spring. So in the mid-1800s, in the Canadian Rockies, there was a French-Canadian trapper named Pierre, and he had been trapping in the Canadian Rockies, and he decided to make his way down into the Southern Rockies. And I don't know if this had to do with the time of year, if it was going to get too snowy up that direction, and he wanted to migrate south, or what exactly the situation was, but... He trapped and made his way south into Montana and then Wyoming and then Colorado. And as he reached the upper Animus River Valley on Colorado's western slope, he found an abandoned mine and remains of a crude shelter that was made of rock very nearby and believe the shelter had pretty much fallen down but he could tell there used to be a shelter there and the mine had remains of old tools and equipment and, and stuff reminiscent of the old Spanish mining of centuries before so when Pierre explored the mine he discovered thick veins of gold in the quartz. So he was excited at the prospect of becoming a miner now and becoming rich. So of course this wasn't his main profession. So since he was a trapper, he needed tools and men to help him mine this location. And he made note of the location and he headed for the nearest settlement. So after making his way south and camping for a couple days to get there, he made his way to northwestern New Mexico. I guess there was a town, maybe this was the first town he came across. So near this tiny settlement, he found the ranch of Juan Sanchez, who had a ranch and many horses, and they eventually became friends while Pierre stayed in the village and prepared for an expedition and, you know, prepared to get supplies and everything that he would need for this exposition, expedition. So Pierre decided that he would let Juan Sanchez in on his find and they decided to become partners. And Juan would supply the horses and also 26 laborers to help with the expedition and the mines. So obviously this is probably why he was brought in. So it looked like Pierre most likely needed Juan for his ability to provide the horses and the laborers. Maybe they were men that also worked on his ranch. But either way... They decided to become partners, and Pierre's job would be to lead them to the gold, and then they would split the profits. So they left one day in April with 30 pack mules loaded down with provisions needed for this excursion, and they had a, a few months worth of you know, sound it's like food and, and everything else. So they could be gone for a quite a few months if needed. And the trip was long and arduous with all of these mules and all of this gear. But it was fairly uneventful as they found plenty of game along the way. And there were water and grasses and stuff for the horses and mules, I believe, at this time. If it was uh, April, they're probably in the valleys, the, the snows were melting away, so it sounds like they had adequate ability to catch game and, and had food for the, for the horses and mules. So they eventually made it to a flat, grassy plain that extended from the river, and I believe this was the Animus River. And 
It seemed to be a great place to camp for the night, and as they cut wood for fire, someone happened to notice as they looked up on the ridge, and it sounds like this ridge was a little ways away. It wasn't right upon them, but at a bit of a distance. There were a few Native Americans on horses observing them, and Pierre had identified them as Utes. So they weren't sure what to make of this, so the guards were posted throughout the night, and, you know, they were letting their horses and pack mules, you know, have a break and graze at this point already. So at the point that they spotted these Native Americans, they weren't sure what to make of it, and, and apparently they were camping there for a little while to kind of recharge and it sounds like they saw these Native Americans up on the high ridge at a distance. They saw them more than once. But they always seemed to be watching from a distance and you know from that ridge and they never came any closer. So the men on the expedition began to relax as it seemed like an attack would not be imminent at this point. Then the men ended up making it to the mines and the operations went on for months and I don't know if the spot that they camped by the river if this was very very close to the mines it sounds like it may have been but uh, maybe it was still another day or two away to get to the mines that part wasn't clarified very well if the spot they were being watched was literally right by the mines they were eventually mining so they amassed a great amount of high grade gold ore that they also separated from the quartz so they could have you know very high grade ore and keep mining for a quite a while and as they amassed more and more gold in their leather packs that they had for transporting the gold they noticed that the presence of the natives watching from the area cliffs and ridges was gradually increasing but still none of them ever approached their camp or mine so again they weren't really sure what to make of their presence they noticed that their numbers were increasing but no one was coming down to bother them so maybe they were just observing what was going on in their camp but as of October and uh, they thought we better start getting ready to go so October turned to early November and the miners were running low on supplies and provisions and they figured that they had been lucky to have such a long season and it went really well and they figured they really needed to get out of the mountains before the snow came very soon and with it already being November if they didn't have much for snow yet they probably had been pretty lucky so it took them a couple of days to get ready to leave so they had now 60 leather packs full of gold Pierre figured they would need to head to New Mexico and cash in this stuff. They figured once they cashed in their gold, they would be able to pay their laborers, and then him and Juan would split the remaining profits. And then they could organize another expedition for the next year since there appeared to still be plenty of gold left in the mines. So as they finally departed camp, the snow started coming down hard. They only made it a few miles down the valley before they could make no more progress due to the heavy amount of snow starting to come down. So they stopped at a hot spring next to a deep red cliff. Here there was also a meadow of grass, but it was starting to get covered in snow. So they unpacked the mules and horses and turned them loose to see if they could graze some of the grasses beneath the accumulating snow. So the men made a meal and they attempted to stay warm. The next morning the storm had lifted and they looked around for their horses and mules and they could not find them. They were gone. 
Pierre sent about six men out to look for them. And when those men failed to return, Pierre and Juan assumed that the Native Americans had probably taken their horses and mules and maybe also eliminated the men that they sent out to search. Now they had a big problem. They had a lot of gold. They had a few meager supplies. The winter was coming fast. And they had no horses or mules to escape their situation and they also may have a Native American problem on their hands. They weren't sure. So Pierre ordered the remaining men to dig a trench at the base of the Red Cliffs. And they placed the packs of gold in this trench and buried them with dirt and rocks and whatever they could find there. So they plan to come back for them later. At this point, 22 men remained. They divided up their provisions and arms and food and they split into four groups and each group headed in a different direction. And this was done to confuse the Native Americans in hope that some of them could make it out and back to New Mexico. The goal was for all of them to meet at the Sanchez Ranch eventually. So many weeks later, Pierre and Juan Sanchez and two of the laborers, they did make it back to the ranch, barely alive, frostbitten, and starving. And they discovered that none of the rest of the group had ever arrived at the ranch. And as the four men recovered, none of the other men from the expedition had ever showed up. So they figured that, that these men may have fallen prey to the Native Americans in the area or possibly died of, of exposure in the Winter Mountain Wilderness. They weren't really sure, but they were pretty sure they were most likely gone. So after recovering, Juan Sanchez was unfortunately bucked off of a horse and he broke his neck and he died soon after. Pierre, he never fully recovered as he lost many toes to frostbite and he could no longer walk very well. He did want to return to the Red Cliff Hot Springs, but he was afraid of the Native Americans and he figured they would need a well-armed patrol to fend off any possible attack. But by 1899, Pierre was an old man and he was never able to organize that expedition to go back for the gold. In his later years, Pierre had made friends with a young Mexican man named Pedro Giron. One day when Pierre had decided that he was never going to be able to go back, you know, to the mine or to the gold cache, he told Pedro the story and the locations to the best of his recollection. So Pedro Giron he got three men together to go with him into the Animus River Valley. He found the large grassy meadow that he believed was the place that the party camped while they were mining the gold. And he found the area that they had separated quartz from the gold, possibly in Arastra. But further up on the slope, there had been a landslide the prior year, and he figured it probably covered up wherever the mine had been. So he decided to go downstream and to find the Red Cliffs and the Hot Springs. So Old Pierre's description of this area was very confusing. And this was possibly due to the addition of the narrow gauge railroad to the Animus River Valley causing some rearranging of some of the topography as they cut the shelves into the mountains to make room for the train tracks. And I believe this is the Durango Silverton narrow gauge railroad that was now in this valley but wasn't prior when the mining was going on. So with the confusion Giron decided he needed to return to New Mexico to get a better description of the Hot Springs area from Pierre so he could be a little better at locating this particular location since there was a new railroad bed in the valley. And as he returned, he discovered that Pierre had now died. 
So Giron went back many years, and in his final trip, he believed that he knew exactly where the gold cache was buried. Now that he finally found the location that he was pretty sure was the right location, he just needed mining equipment to excavate it. So on the return trip, with the needed supplies, Pedro Giron was riding his mare, and his mare slipped on some loose rocks and pinned Pedro beneath and crushed his leg. So his leg was shattered pretty good, and he had to head back to New Mexico to recover. So his leg was in such bad shape that he had to use crutches from then on. And at that point, he knew he was never going to make it back to the Animus Valley either to look for the treasure. And he was apparently the last person to find this location. So it's believed that there are still 60 packs of gold. Of course, the leather has probably rotted away now, but it's believed there's still 60 packs of gold buried somewhere near some red cliffs and a small hot springs in the Animus River Valley in southwestern Colorado. So it is possible that the landscape has changed a bit with the narrow gauge railroad coming through, but it's very possible that that all of this gold is still out there. And there may be a mine covered by a landslide, but if another landslide comes through, it's possible the mine could be exposed again too. So that is the story of the Colorado Hot Springs gold cash.